Hello and welcome to this video where we will look at this design pattern where we were using stream sets to move data from Oracle to Snowflake and in this case we will use a stream sets origin called as Oracle CDC client which looks at the redo logs and extracts all the changes and moves it to Snowflake and we'll see how easy it is and what we need to do. My name is Salim Potiwala and please feel free to email me if you have any question about this video. So what we are going to look today is Oracle Change Data Capture, what it is, how we can use it. Uh, we will look at Snowflake Merge where we can use Snowflake as a destination and set up in such a way that it extracts all, this change, all these changes from Oracle and writes it to Snowflake. There are some prerequisites we'll have to go through and then we will look at a demo stream sets pipeline and we will execute this pipeline and uh, monitor the changes. We will also uh, execute this pipeline and make some changes on Oracle side and see the actions which uh, happens behind the scene and what happens on the Snowflake side. So Oracle CDC uh, uses Oracle log miner redo logs. Uh, Oracle log miner, which is part of Oracle database, enables you to query online and archived redo logs through a SQL interface. Redo logs contains uh, information about the history of activity on this database. In stream sets, if you're using the Oracle CDC client, you can read the redo logs uh, in one of the three ways. So you can set it up to say, uh, from this date onwards, I want to start reading the changes you can say that, okay, uh, if, I, if I ran this pipeline yesterday and if I run it now, I want to see only the changes between yesterday and today. And also you can uh, provide an SCN for it. So SCN is a service change number, which happens every time a change happens on the database. So you can configure your pipeline to use one of these three. The use case for CDC is for database replication so if you have a database on premise and you want to replicate this database in cloud, you can use the CDC client, which will then listen to all the inserts, updates, and deletes that happen on the database on specific tables or the whole database. It's up to you how you configure them and uh, replicate these changes on, in our case, a Snowflake database. The design pattern is that if you have already an existing database which you want to replicate, then we recommend you to use our JDBC multi-table consumer origin to read this database uh, and then write everything on Snowflake and then enable the CDC at one particular time and start reading from that. So then you have a full history and then all changes after that going forward. And Oracle CDC client uses JDBC to connect to the database. Again, we will see how we can configure and provide the JDBC driver to our streams as pipeline. CRUD information is available in the record headers. It tells you exactly what records uh, are changed. If it's an insert, if it's an update, if it's a delete, if it's an update or delete, it will give you the old data. And in case of delete, it will tell you what has been deleted. So you can use that if you want to do it manually or if you plug it in with Snowflake, then it automatically makes those changes uh, on the Snowflake database as well. And then we will look at how we can configure this origin. On Snowflake side, uh, we will use stream set Snowflake uh, destination uh, as, as this destination for our data and you can write to one or more table in one pipeline and configuration of destination we will look at and see what needs to be done and what are the options available. There is an option to use the merge command which will then insert, update and delete uh, as it happens on the Oracle side. You can also enable data drift handling by this if there is a change in the structure of the table or one of the underlying tables um, then the same changes will be done on Snowflake sites automatically for you. So if you add a new column, a new column will be added in Snowflake. Add a new table, that new table will be added in Snowflake as well. So you can enable this data drift handling. So you don't have to make any changes. The pipeline does it for you. 
and also we will look at uh, alerts and notification so if this change happens even though snowflake will handle it and can make those changes uh, in the destination but if you want to be informed let's say on an email or a message on your slack channel then we will configure that how it does that primary key information can be extracted from snowflake directly as well so if you if your tables in snowflake already has this primary key information for the tables you are updating, inserting, and deleting from, then that information will be fetched and action will be taken. But if your Snowflake table does not have these configurations on primary keys, then you can specify in your pipeline, say, this table, this is the primary key, and based on that key, the merge will happen. Again, we will look at the configurations as we go forward. So prerequisite-wise, you need to make sure that your Oracle uh, database uh, has LogMiner enabled. So LogMiner provides redo logs that summarizes database activity. Any inserts, updates, and deletes are, are noted and recorded in the LogMiner. The origin uses these logs to generate records. And LogMiner requires that the database must be open, writable, and in archive log mode with archiving enabled. Again, I will show you where you can find more information how to do this. Uh, again, it's provided as part of Streams' product documentation. And next thing you need to do is enable supplemental logging for database tables. So to retrieve data from redo logs, LogMiner requires supplemental logging for the database or the tables. Uh, you can specify certain tables which, for which you are enabling the change data capture. But if you are enabling for the whole database, you can set this supplemental logging option for the whole database. Uh, you can enable at least the primary key uh, with identification key logging records uh, included only the primary keys and change fields. Next is uh, to extract the log miner directory. When using redo logs as the uh, dictionary source, you must extract the log miner dictionary to the redo logs before you start the pipeline. Again, there are steps available and provided uh, in the documentation to exactly tell you how to do that. And you need to have a user with the required roles and privilege to be able to access these uh, redo logs. Last prerequisite here is to make sure that a JDBC driver is installed for your stream sets data collector engine that you are going to use for extraction. Again, I will show it to you how to do that.